Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault podcast. I'm your host, all Jamie Creedy. And for this episode, we're going to be taking a look at crop circles. That's right, something that I would say everybody knows about. Um, you know, when you mention crop circles, you get that image in your head of a farmer's field with a circle in it. Um, and I think they do play an important role in the mystery world in terms of what we think they are. Um, so I will get into a little bit more detail with that later. But let's start from the very beginning. Let's, uh, let's find out where these came from and when they started appearing. So uh, crop circles. So basically they are strange patterns that appear mysteriously overnight, mainly overnight, in farms' fields. Um, mainly cereal crops. And they've created, you know, intrigue and fascination amongst the public and the press. Uh, there's people who actually investigate this. They're called, I never knew this until I did this show actually, they're called serial, serialologists. And with their findings, they have created books, they've created blogs, there's been um, documentaries on crop circles, there's also been movies, which I'll bring up later on. But despite them having studied these circles for decades, uh, the question still remains of what or who, who makes them. Uh, there's no sort of final definitive answer. And what's interesting with crop circles, especially in the mystery world, with uh, the previous episodes I've spoken about, let's just say you've got you know the Loch Ness monster in Bigfoot and UFOs, which which do come into this later on. You know, because I always say. You know, if you can't work something out in the mystery world, just blame aliens, you know. <laughs> they're like your go they're your go to answer. Um but what's interesting with the crop circles, as I said, like with Bigfoot, is that crop circles are evidently, you know, real because let's just say you can go to a field, let's just say Wiltshire, which is where they always turn up each year. And there's a good chance you go and find a crop circle and you'll be able to see it. And like I say, in this case, is a, it's not a case of trying to find it. We found it. We're just trying to work out who's made it. And um, in order for me to do that and try and give you guys some answers to that question, we're going to have to turn the clock back to the origins of the crop circle, which is, I think, where you always need to go back in these cases. So the first record of this goes right back to the 17th century and there was a case back in 1678 in Hertfordshire and it's the case of the mowing devil and it's about a, um, a farmer having a dispute with um, one of his workers on the land and it was a money dispute and the farmer said look I'm not going to pay you that much money to go and mow my field he said that I'd rather pay the devil to go and do it and it's almost like that case of, you know, be careful what you wish for, because apparently overnight, the farmer said, and this is back in 1678, that he saw strange lights over the field, and he thought that the field was actually on fire. And then when he returned in the morning, he found all of his crop um, nicely cut and pulled up, and news of this swept around the village and it became a folklore tale so that's a little bit of detail on that so that's like a, a first documentation going back to the 17th century in, in England of a something mysteriously happening in a field and whether that's a hoax or what I don't know and that's what we're going to get into then moving forward to the 1960s, and this is, in, this is in Australia, and this is like one of the first ones in modern times. Uh, a small town of Tully in Australia, and again, it's a farmer, and he said that he saw a flying saucer in his field, and it rise from a swampy area, and it flew away. He went to go and investigate the field, and he found a circle in the reeds. So he um, called the authorities. The authorities turned up. They had a look at it. And they put it down to what they call out in Australia is a, a dust devil. So I think that's like a, a mini tornado or a water spout. So they, they put it down to that. So that hit the press um, and it became more of a UFO report. But in that UFO report, obviously, the farmer said that there were some circles that were left behind. And I remember this in like the 
as I mentioned before, the old coffee table mystery books I used to read in the 80s, where you'd see these circles and people were saying, yeah, that's that's where a flying saucer has landed. So that's where the, uh, you know, the UFO connection ties in with that and one of the uh, first cases to be recorded. And then in the 70s you had uh, small circles that started to appear and then it increased in the 80s and you had a massive peak in the 90s of more elaborate and more complex circles. And I remember this, I remember this here in the news in, in quite a big way actually of people really getting interested in, in this and I think it made the front line um, news in the tabloids and you saw pictures of crop circles and there's some very elaborate ones. Um, they had some strange markings on it and everybody was talking about this and it was that whole, is it aliens, you know, they trying to tell us something and people were talking about, you know, could it be like time travellers trying to warn us of stuff. Um, scientists started talking about the ley lines which kind of go back to the, I think that goes back to like the sort of prehistoric times of like natural energy flowing across the lands. Um, magnetic force um, there is that thing that you can do with like a, a piece of paper and a magnet and some iron filings where you put the sort of magnet under the paper and then it creates circles so that kind of makes it seem a little bit sort of plausible when you're talking about magnetic forces because you do have a magnetic force between the north and south poles so there's all that sort of scientific stuff um, and then people started talking about, like I say, with the aliens and the warning signs. So yeah, it was it was big in the 90s. So everybody was kind of talking about the crop circles and stuff. Then in 1991, um, and this kind of spoiled everybody's fun, because two guys came forward um, and confessed that they actually create the patterns themselves and they were hoaxes. And their names are Doug Bauer and Dave Charlie, and they actually said that... Um, they were actually inspired by the 1966 Tully UFO report. So there's that connection there with the um, past incident. And they said that they, you know, they liked the idea of like these circles and UFOs turning up. So they thought it'd be a good idea to go into the fields, create some circles and make everybody believe that it's um, some sort of mysterious force of aliens and all that sort of stuff. And then what they went on to go and do is they actually showed the journalist how they made these circles and they used rope with um, wooden boards. Um, I feel like you, someone stands in the middle and then someone walks around the field in a, in a circle and then that's how it, they create the pattern. But then what they did say is, and this is where people still remain today, this case is a mystery, even though these hoaxes have turned up and said it's us, is that you, you get about a thousand crop circles each year and Doug Boa and Dave Cholly basically said that we, we can account for 200 of those crop circles each year but the rest um, we can't account for. So that's either other hoaxes or something else going on. So people were coming away and they thought well okay you've got the hoaxes but what if there just happens to be some mysterious force amongst that so that's where the mystery continues and what's interesting now and this is what i said earlier with what i was trying to explain as in we know crop circles are real we're trying to work out who's created them and in this case you've even got people that have turned up and said hey we're, we're the guys that have created them we're, we're we're the hoaxers but what's happened is and this is interesting this is really interesting in the mystery world and this is why i think crop circles are Actually quite an important case in the mystery world when you look at it, as in people have come come forward and said, yeah, we've, we've made them. But then the researchers and the serologists have gone, yeah, but how can you prove it? Because <laughs> they're like saying, okay, you're, you're, you're telling us that, but we don't believe you. Well, we don't believe you 100% because um, what the researchers have done also over over the years is they've had a look at the circles and they've had a look at the stems. And this is kind of what makes this case, case interesting is that to actually bend the st stems the way the hoaxes are saying that they do it, the, some of the circles that they found, the, the stems have actually bent almost like naturally. 
that's what the findings have been. So like the, the stems have almost been microwaved or something like that, or they've done it themselves. And then they've tested with the board where they've gone around and they said in order to actually do that as a hoaxer, you would actually like snap or see a um, depression in the stem. But what the scientists are saying is that some of these circles actually have natural bends and they're saying that there's like signs of um, heat and that's why I mentioned like the microwave and that. So the UF uh, serologists are looking into this and they're, what they're saying is that, okay, you're the hoaxers, but how can you explain this? And I guess what the, then what the hoaxers are saying, yeah, well, you know, we can account for 200 out of the thousand, but the rest we, we, we can't account for. Now, whether that's just other hoaxes, which, which is probably what it is, but then when the researchers had a look at them, they said, yeah, but there's still stuff within the circles that we, we can't explain. And the other weird thing is there was a case on one of the circles where um, they looked at all the stems and it was just the cereal crop that had been bent. But all the other um, weeds and all the... And I've, I, I go into fields with all my um, treasure hunting and that, so I can sort of see where they're saying with this. When you have cereal crop in the field, it's it's quite likely that you'll have crop which was grown in the past um, to also grow out as well, and you might have some weeds and things like that. And what they're saying is that that previous crop or weeds has not bent; that's still stood up. It's only the cereal crop that has bent over, which uh, creates another puzzle for them to say that it's only the cereal crop which is bending and not the other stuff. So that kind of creates another mystery within a mystery so um, I think the point I'm getting to is that you've actually got someone who's coming forward to say yeah I've done it but then people were saying yeah thanks for that but I'm still going to look into it because you know I don't 100% believe you and I find that quite interesting and quite you know itself as you know <laughs> as a society we still question stuff uh, which is interesting which then leads on to my next topic, which is, uh, you know, when these circles appear. And they mostly appear overnight. Um, but to this day, um, having a look on online and things like that, doing the research of this, uh, no one's caught anybody making crop circles. Uh, nothing's been caught on camera except for the hoaxes. I think there was uh, some footage of a circle appearing in the field, but I think that was all done by... CGI and that's the other thing you know in modern days as I said you know with uh, CGI and being able to photoshop stuff it's difficult to try and sort of prove what is real and what isn't real uh, with uh, modern day technology and um, most circles have access to roads and highways and a public place so that would um, connect the dots to the hoaxes because obviously if you want to make one of these circles you know you want to quickly park up and go out and make it um, but then you've got some questionable circles where people have gone, well, how the hell did you do that? And one of them is the famous Milk Hill um, circle that turned up in 2001. And this is massive. You know, it's a, it's a spiral circle, which is 1,500 feet by 1,500 feet, and it was made overnight. And in order to do that, you would... I would say possibly have to get organised with quite a lot of people uh, to create that overnight. It's got you know loads and loads of little circles within circles in the um, spiral formation. Like I say, that's 1,500 feet by 1,500 feet. It is massive. And the actual geometrics is spot on. So when you think about it, when you look into it, you think about the size of it. This would have been done at night time. Uh, you would have had a lot of you would have had a lot of hoaxes to do this, or maybe not. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Could it have been one person? Could they be that clever? This is what makes the mystery. Is it a group of people? And when you start thinking of a group of people, there's always that probability that someone's going to say, "Oh yeah, it was me." You know, maybe get drunk down the pub one night and sort of tell your mates, "Yeah, we're part of this group." I'm just saying that's that. Like, there's again the laws. You always chuck in the laws of probability in that. And I am also talking about this as a perspective from 2001 uh, because there's some more stuff that I'll get into shortly about this going into modern times which kind of 
does explain this, but I'm just saying from from a perspective from 2001, you've had the two hoaxes come forward, as I've mentioned, and they said we haven't made all of them, and then this turns up, and then you can see how the serologists are going, oh, you know, so how can you account for this? So it's, it, it's I think a lot with crop circles is how you look at it from a sort of certain perspective. But um, go and check out the Milk Hill one. If you, you've probably seen it. I'd say there's a good chance you have, but you haven't. Check it out on, on Google. It is, it's a spectacular piece of art, whether it's made by hikes or, you know, or something else mysterious. But then moving on from that, so you've, I've given you a little bit of sort of background on the circles, how they've been made, how, how people have looked to, at them from a sort of research perspective. They've then become that popular that it has reached uh, Hollywood. And one of the first films, uh, it's quite a good film actually, is back in 1974 and it's a film called Phase 4 and it's about super intelligent ants. It's a like, sci-fi horror movie. And it's one of the first movies that um, depicts like crop circles, which are actually created by these ants in the movies. And they actually say, and you know, Hollywood does have a lot to do with, you know, um, let's just say leaving impressions on people. You know, you go and watch this film, and think, oh, that's a good idea. Let's go and do that. So it's just funny how you had this film come out in the seventies, and then from the seventies onwards, you ended up having these uh, circles turn up themselves. And then obviously you had the, I think it's, this is the sort of famous one in, say, like recent times, the M. Night Shannon uh, film called Signs, where they they mention that it is aliens in this movie and it's about an alien invasion and, you know, crop circles turn up as a mapping system for the aliens to uh, carry out their invasion. So yeah, check it out, it's a good movie, it's got a little bit of a Shannon twist at the end of it. And then from Hollywood movies, which, you know, are pretty cool, you've also got the tourist industry in this case, which is massive. Um, people go to Wiltshire each year, and you can go and buy t-shirts, you can um, go get on a helicopter to go and see the circles, you've got walking tours, you've got book sales. So the tourist in- industry um, for this is massive, and people love it. You know, I've seen again. I've seen some documentaries. People turned up. They walked in the circles, and they said, "You know, we we feel like we get some energy off it and power and all that sort of stuff." And you know what? The way I see this sort of stuff at the end of the day, if people are enjoying it, and you know, people believe what they want to believe, they want to believe it's aliens. Or some people say, "Yeah, we know it's a hoax, but we still enjoy it. It's pretty cool." And this is the other thing, because there's also that. And this is quite important. A lot of people say, "Well, you know." Uh, don't farmers get, you know, annoyed about people coming into their fields and creating these circles and destroying their crops? And they say, well, no, because what happens is it's actually turned it into a bit of a commercial thing. You know, the farmers down in Wiltshire are loving this because it's bringing all the tourists down and they're, you know, selling crop circle T-shirts and they're making a couple of quid out of it. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a win-win-win <laughs> type scenario. Um, you've also got a pub called The Barge Inn and they call it Crop Circle Central so you can go and get a beer and talk about crop circles um, which is a pub I might even put on the list to go and visit so it sounds pretty cool and the other thing I think it's worth mentioning here as well it's it's kind of non it's, it's related but it's not related but it's a similar sort of thing in my eyes which is the Nazca Lines in Peru which is perhaps maybe something I'll leave for another episode, but I thought I'd tie it in with this, which is something else that you can see from the sky. Uh, so you've got these uh, large ge- geocliffs um, in South America, and scientists believe that they go back to 500 BC, and they are spectacular. You've got um, pictures of birds, spiders, even aliens. Again, you know, the aliens come in on this. Um, so turning the clock back even further to like five, you know 500 years BC in South America, uh, humans have always had this fascination with creating uh, patterns in the lands for. Well, who knows? You know, this is this is the things what we're trying to get to. You know, the, 
the, you know, for the South Americans, there's always this thing about the, you know, like the sky gods and things like that. And we've always been like looking up at the skies for whatever reason. So there's that. That's why I thought I'd mention the, um, the geoglyphs from South America with this. You kind of got a little bit of a tie there, similar sort of thing, which is happening on the fields in, in England. So um, there you go, guys. This is it's quite a short episode, this one, because I'm not going to go into it any more in any more detail. I think I've covered most of the areas here. There's some more stuff you can have a look into online, but I think I've covered the main things of, of crop circles um, in this case. And I think one of the main important things in here is how we how we interpret it as, as the public and our fascinations and... As I said, you know, tourists turn up and they think, you know, you get an energy from it. And in the mystery world, it is that thing where, as I said before, we like to believe in stuff. We like a little bit of hocus pocus. And I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, if it creates if it creates a day out for you to go down to Wiltshire and find these circles, then great. Um, but what I think, you know, having a look at this in all seriousness... I, I can't help but think on this case. I just think it is a hoax. If someone asks me, I just think that crop circles are made by people who, you know, have got very organised, very clever. Um, that, as I said, you know, I've, I've put some facts onto the table to try and, in a way where you can sort of see how the press can see it. When I said, you know, there could actually be 12 people that have got together, very organised, and they keep it as a very close net team they don't tell anybody and they're very sort of elusive with it and they go out and they create them and there is actually a group that have come forward and said yeah it is us you know we we go out and we actually um go and promote businesses and can you go and put this in the field because it's a bit of free advertising for us so people like that have come forward so i would say it's up in the it's up in the large ninety percent portion for me to say yeah that crop circles are a hoax, but you know there could actually just be that small percentage where there is a little bit of a mystery aspect, and I think that's kind of what we hang on with, you know, either as researchers or the public to say yeah, you know, okay hoaxes, thanks for telling us that, but. We don't believe you 100%. We still think it's either like aliens or some mysterious force. And I just think that's just in our human nature to think like that. And when you think about it, it actually, you know, goes back to, stems back, you know, stems, no pun in there. <laughs> to the other cases that I've had a look at, you know, so far, um, particularly with, let's just say Roswell. You know, when I was saying that, you know, in that episode, what if the government came forward and actually said, or the Air Force said, yeah, it is a weather balloon. Um, and it's really watertight that it is that, but then public are still saying, you know, and I, we still believe it's the aliens. Or, you know, if someone went to Loch Ness and said, no, it's not in there, but there's still always going to be people that are going to say, yeah, but I know you're telling us that, but I still think that it is. So there's always that... Yeah, that thing with us, you know, as as the public, we're always going to have that bit of mystery. And I think that is great. I'm not knocking it at all. It, you know, my point here is it's just that we just love a bit of mystery. And I think the final outcome here with this, in these cases, I've still got a lot more cases to go and venture out and have a look at. And I guarantee I'll probably get to the same similar sort of conclusion, is that we, um, we just love a bit of hocus pocus. So there you go. Um, that's where I've left that. Um, hope you enjoyed that episode, guys. There's some, like I say, I've brought some facts and some figures. Hopefully, that kind of makes a little bit of sense to you. And um, I'll leave that to you guys to sort of think for yourselves. What, what do you think it is? Um, so there you go. So that leads me to a little bit of admin, guys, before I close the show up and. As always, I'm a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, which is the Bite Size Cinema Podcast, where I talk about movies. And um, you can find the Mystery Vault Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, several other players. Um, if you put into uh, Google the Mystery Vault Podcast, it'll take you to somewhere where you can listen to it. Um, I've also got a Facebook page, which is where I'm most active, so leave any comments on there, let us know 
what you think about the episodes, give us a little bit of feedback, um, and also put some suggestions on there as well if there's anything you want me to take a look at. And um, just tell you about what I'm going to be doing next. So I've got a couple of shows um, in the work. So I've got uh, Vampires, uh, The Devil's Hoofs Mystery from down in the West Country in England, and also got the uh, Philadelphia experiment coming up as well so uh, I haven't decided which one I'm going to do yet so I'll pick one of those out of the three to do um, so that will be coming um, in the next week or so so look out for that episode so as always guys keep it spooky keep it mysterious keep it safe and uh, you know keep looking for the truth and I'll see you soon I think this is a ghost story I think this is a ghost story Sitting here in this room is a well. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.